Hello my friends, this is Jeannie. Welcome to my channel. If you are a returning visitor, welcome back and thank you. As you can see, I have a bit of a mess on my desk. Yes, I am in the middle of full steam ahead Harry Potter mode for Ella's birthday. I shared with you how I made the textbook, the Hogwarts textbooks, uh, by converting composition notebooks. And something else that Ella um, said that she wanted to have at her party were wands. Now, I didn't, to be honest, I didn't want to make the wands. <laughs> so I checked Etsy to see if um, I can get a deal on uh, Harry Potter type wands. And OMG, ridiculously expensive. Like legit five dollars a pop per wand out of your mind because I have at least 30 kids coming to her party you do the math that is cray cray so I was not going to spend that kind of money on wands did some searching here on YouTube and came across a few videos where um, people were demoing some uh, DIYs on how to make these Harry Potter wands um, after watching, I don't know how many videos and a little bit of trial and error, uh, I come up, I came up with what works for me. So, um, this is totally not a new idea. If you do a search on Harry Potter wands DIY here on, um, YouTube, you'll find tons of videos. So I definitely don't take credit for this idea. I, I knew the materials I wanted to work with, but I figured someone else had done it and I was correct. So um, this is me just improving on some videos that I have seen here on YouTube. So the way I made Ella's Harry Potter wands is I used some chopsticks and I purchased a pack of chopsticks from Amazon. The longer the chopsticks, the better. Um, I was hoping to find like 12 inch long chopsticks. I couldn't. So I just didn't find them. I don't know why. Um, I really, really, really wanted at least 12 inches. But uh, the best I can do is about 10. These are about 10 and a half, 10 inches or so. And relatively inexpensive. Um, you can do a quick Amazon search. You can probably even get them through Oriental Trading or... Um, any kind of bulk type place. Um, I wanted to alter these wands, uh, these wands, these chopsticks. So I got the chopsticks. I also picked up, because these obviously looked like chopsticks and I didn't want them to still look like chopsticks when all was said and done, I knew I wanted to kind of alter the, the top tip of the wand so it looks less like a chopstick and more wandy, <laughs> if that makes sense. So... I was going through my stash. I found some inexpensive uh, beads. Color didn't really matter because they would be painted over. So uh, all that mattered was the shape and the size. This is the shape and size I was looking for. Round, but not too bulbous. And basically, once you attach this to the end of the wand here, it changes the form or shape of the wand a little bit so it looks less like a chopstick and more like a wand. So chopstick, some beads, and I'm sure you'll find some in your stash. I have tons of treep, this cheaper um, acrylic paint. I have tons of acrylic paint laying about the house in all different brands from cheap, cheap to very expensive because of the mixed media that I work with. I pulled out the, I think these, um, these mostly I use with my Girl Scouts. I have like, wow. 30 40 colors of these my studio acrylic craft paints these are super old some of them uh are more liquidy than others some of them are even like semi-paste but a good shake they seem to be working okay so um in addition to the chopsticks the beads the acrylic paint i also picked up what else what else what else hot, my hot glue gun i'm using my hot glue gun and glue i think that's everything so let me share with you here's one that's in the process of drying so believe it or not this 
started out as a chopstick and it looks nothing like a chopstick you see the difference you see the difference that that tip makes to the top of the chop to the chopstick by adding that it goes from chopstick to wand okay and this is before I sealed it I haven't sealed any of the wands I wanted to film this video I'm probably gonna seal them sometime during the week so I might cut in kind of like a this is what the ultimate finished product looked like but this is what the semi finished product looked like and to go from this to this is amazing and it is super 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 easy I cannot express how easy this project is so let me go ahead and share with you all right so basically what you do is you're gonna take your chapstick first thing I did was using my hot glue gun and I'm using the low temp setting I find that the high temp um, setting um, just makes the glue entirely too runny and it's not it's, it's just easier to control if you work with it at a lower temp especially if you want to try to add some patterns different patterns to your wand so first thing I do is I'm gonna adhere this little bead I'm gonna add a tiny bit of glue to the top here tiny bit okay I'm gonna adhere my bead give that a good press and I'm going to try to center it at the top of the wand okay and this is where your creativity comes into play and truly my friends there is no messing this up I promise you there is no messing this up because um, each wand is going to be unique into itself you see all these patterns on the top I um, created all these different patterns see that using hot glue and depending on my mood depended on the pattern that um I made so like I said there is no messing it up here's one that I just globbed up some glue at the top in the middle there's no messing this up so don't stress that it has to be perfect these wands are not perfect okay so you have the tip on see there's the tip now you're gonna go in with your hot glue and you're gonna create um, some patterns using your hot glue I would say that you want to come out come down maybe a third of the way um, you don't want to do any more than that because then it looks less like a wand to me it looks a little more like a wand um, if the top handle if you will comes down about a third of the way so uh, I think the pattern I like my favorite pattern was this one right here and I don't know that I can necessarily create that, but I'm going to try. But I love that pattern. So let me show you. Um, you can do whatever pattern you want, but um, this is the pattern I'm going to try. So here we go. So basically, also at the low temperature, you can kind of go back and forth with the glue, creating different texture different depths because so you don't want an absolute smooth surface you really don't um i think just to lend some interest and for it to look more uh distressed and more aged and just unique unto itself you want to make it a textured pattern um very uneven and I think the best way to accomplish that is, like I said, low temp setting so that the glue dries. doesn't get super hot. If your glue is bubbling, if your hot glue is bubbling, it's too hot. It's too hot. And all it's going to do, it's going to run. That's all it's going to do. So you don't want glue that's bubbling. If it's smoking, it's definitely too hot. Um, and it's not going to be easy to work with or control. So you want low temp so that you can kind of go back and forth add different dimension different texture so that's pretty cool okay and I think I'm gonna go down a tiny bit more it's about a third of the way that's pretty cool 
All right, let's see. Let's compare to the others. Yeah, it's about maybe a little bit more. Let's go down a little bit more. About a third of the way. I'm going to follow my own rule. That's about a third of the way right there. So super easy, right? It looks crazy right now. But once this dries and you paint it, believe me, it'll make a world of difference. Now, something else you can do um, is you can add rings um, down uh, different uh, areas of the wand. Just again, so if you don't want to totally, here we go, can I get it in? A totally plain wand and you want to add more interest to the bottom of the wand, just add some rings. And I'm not exactly, <laughs> I am far from Miss Steady Hands. So my rings aren't perfect. Like that ring right there is a little cray cray. But you want to go nice and slow. I'll show it again. And as you're adding the glue, even pressure and just turn the wand. Okay, so even pressure, spin the wand. And there we have another ring. So there you go. I have this old piece of styrofoam that I found in my daughter's stash. Yes, Ella has a stash. Her stash is hidden. And her stash basically consists of things she takes from my stash. But I found her hidden stash. And I asked, I did ask her permission. And she said, I can have this old piece of styrofoam. Um, on condition that I replace it with something even cooler than that. So <laughs> she was kind enough to let me have her old styrofoam. So we're going to set this in here to dry. Just going to stick a hole and let that dry okay and we're gonna do it one more time we're gonna grab a ring we're gonna grab the chopstick add a little bit of glue at the top doo, doo, doo. so I am super excited about this party guys you don't even know her invites are done I have to seal them with a wax seal and yes I know I have a wax seal <laughs> they look like authentic uh, invites um, or acceptance uh, letters like the um, Hogwarts students get when they're accepted into uh, the school. So I'm super excited about that. I had them printed on parchment paper. I have all kinds of color of acrylic paint on me. What a mess. So there we go. I'm going to glue that on there. I'm going to show you one more. And this one, I think I'm just going to do kind of like a waterfall spiraling type pattern. Also, when you're working with the wand, um, because the glue is going to run a little bit, even on low temp, try to hold it at an angle so that it doesn't run down so much as it pulls out as it's drying, right? So if I were to hold the wand completely straight up this way, it's gonna, ouch, it's gonna run down this way. But if I hold it at an angle this way, it'll tend to stay more in place and more pull out, giving more um, dimension to the project. So, and try not to stick your finger in the glue like I just did. Yeah, we've all done it. If you work with hot glue, you know, one of the problems is sometimes your fingers get in the way. All right, I'm gonna have to add another glue stick to my gun. Bum, bum, bum. So then what I do is after I create these wands, I go in and I add a base coat using a color, uh, whatever color you want. We are using, uh, Ella and I have been using uh, mostly house colors um, for the Gryffindor, Slytherin, Hufflepuff, and Ravenclaw. But um, she switched out one of the colors. And um, which one didn't she like? She... Um, changed out the Hufflepuff yellow and decided to sneak in a purple instead. So we add a base coat of a color paint, let that dry, and then we go in with a final coat 
of a brown so it looks more woodsy right but we don't put it on too thick it's almost like a dry brush so that some of the color beneath it is kind of you know peeking out a little bit not much but a little bit okay and it just adds some interest and color to the wand and then once my paints are dried I go in and I rub on some using my fingers I rub on uh, kind of like a dry a dry rub of some gold paint onto some of the design elements just to highlight them a little bit and you end up with a beautiful looking wand as you saw we are almost done with this one but you can see the pattern how cool is it right and all these are like no-brainers honestly if it wasn't because it's a hot glue gun I would let Maella do this and um, she really really wanted to but I wasn't comfortable with letting her play with the hot uh, glue not yet um, she's you know she's very really smart for her age but she's still eight and I'm not gonna risk her getting a burn so that looks awesome then what you can do if you want to create kind of like you see these rings here this um, spiral no, let's find one with a better spiral here's one this one look at the spiral on that one how it goes up and down the wand I'll show you how to do that if I can find where this little dude goes there we go so to create that spiral again you're gonna apply even pressure to your glue gun and you spin Hopefully the camera's catching this and it doesn't have to be perfect. So these are super easy to make, like I said, if anything, just time consuming. I'm um, especially if you me, I'm a bit of a perfectionist <laughs> in the sense that um, I'm not just going to paint these. I'm also going to seal them so that if they do um, come into contact with anything wet or if a child um, who receives it decides they want to play with it a lot I don't want it the paint to rub off or fall off so um, I'm gonna seal them and it's also gonna give it a nice little shine so you see what I'm doing okay so you continue this as far down as you want to go I think I'm gonna stop it there okay and all these little extra little strings you want to try to pull off but if they stay on no big deal okay and then you have this awesome cool pattern super cool right I'm excited with that so I'm gonna stick that in I'm gonna stick that in here okay and then I'm going to take one that I did earlier. This one, actually, we just did, and it's already dry. So I'm going to paint this one. Um, let's do, let's do, I think I just did a purple. Let's do a green. So I have all of these. I have this cheap plastic palette here. I don't even know where I picked that up from. I've had it for so long. <laughs> I'm going to find a paintbrush. I'm going to take some of this green paint right and just color this up it doesn't have to be perfect because you're gonna have a coat of brown going over it okay but I do want to cover up a lot of this orange okay grab some more paints so yeah let me see what else am I gonna show you guys I still have to show you the bookmarks that I made for her uh, the bookmarks are the Hogwarts Hogwarts Express um, tickets um, that have been laminated. They've been sized and laminated so that um, they'll last a long. They're the size of a bookmark, maybe a little bigger, and they'll last a long, long time. They'll take a good beating because they are laminated. And then I'm going to punch a hole at the top of each of the bookmarks and add a charm the charm is either going to be a key um, with wings 
an owl or a feather, uh, depending on uh, just uh, what materials I have. I'm trying not to buy any new materials. I'm trying to use um, a lot of the materials I already have on hand. I do a lot of mixed media. So I have a, like a really eclectic collection of materials here. And so far the most expensive thing that I have purchased uh, it's not even purchased. It's the cost of printing a lot of things that uh, I need for some of the items that I'm making. That to me has been like the biggest cost. Otherwise, everything um, I'm using is pretty much from my stash. So we have, let's see, the bookmark. I'm also making quills. <laughs> yes, I'm making quills. If I'm giving them textbooks, I, I need to get them quills. So I'm taking some pencils and I am transforming those pencils into quills. I'll share that project with you. Um, I'm also making a chocolate frog box. Um, my gosh, a golden snitch. So I have lots and lots to share with you. So hopefully um, you'll be inspired uh, by my projects. If you're a big Harry Potter fan, hopefully you're enjoying this. If you're not a Harry Potter fan, hopefully you're just getting some ideas on how um, when it comes to party planning, it's easy to DIY most of what you need. Okay, so that is the wand. I'm going to go ahead and I leave, I don't paint the tippy, tippy, tip, 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 because I don't want it to stick in this little box here. So I'm going to go ahead and slide this sucker in there. And once it's in, I'm going to go with my paint and just touch up the tip that I touched okay so I'm gonna let that dry that's gonna be the top coat now I'll get one that I already colored um, here's one miss Ella was working with me earlier here's one that my mama painted here's a blue one that she painted okay so now we're gonna go in and we're gonna add a coat onto this um, I have three different types of brown here I have a bittersweet chocolate I have a chocolate brown and I have a brown. If you can see that, hopefully that's, there it is, any brown. Okay, um, because I don't want all the wands to be exactly the same color, I'm alternating between the different shades of brown, sometimes mixing. So again, this is one of those things where you just, you can't go wrong. You really can't. So I'm going to start with, I think what I'll do with this one is just do a quick brush of the bittersweet chocolate. Okay. So I'll do a quick brush of the bittersweet chocolate and it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. So let's see what else I, <laughs> oh my gosh, I got a sorting hat. Um, because I am, I will be doing a bit of like a sorting ceremony as the kids um, get ready for the first event. Uh, there'll be there are several events. We we rented a place, um, and the kids are going to be doing um, a lot of um, what is called Sky Zone. The kids are going to be doing some tumbling and some dodgeball and whatnot. As the kids arrive, I'm going to sort them. I'm using my sorting hat. I will be wearing the sorting hat. I also put together an, os uh, an awesome costume <laughs> to match my sorting hat. So I'm almost going to be like a living incarnate of the sorting hat. It's going to be so fun. I have um, buttons and stickers that I will give to the kids as I sort them. So hopefully nobody will get upset um, in terms of placement. But hey, c'est la vie. So that's the first coat of that darker brown I'm gonna go in even before this dries I'm gonna take a bit of the lighter chocolate brown and just sweep this around I don't mind if the paints mix a little bit so this is just gonna lighten it up a little bit and again I'm not looking for it to be 100% covered I'm okay with some of the undercolor showing totally okay with that okay so I think that's great doesn't that look awesome 
So I'm going to set that back to dry. And so once all of these dry, I'll go in. Once they dried, what I did was I went in, just turned them over, and I colored up the rest of the tip, okay? So that way you get a fully colored wand. Isn't that gorgeous? This is beautiful. And this alone, like this, perfect. You can't go wrong. It's perfect. Look at that. You do not know. There's no way you can know that this used to be a chopstick. Isn't it gorgeous? It's beautiful. But I'm going to stress it a little bit. I'm going to change it a little bit, kind of highlight some of the uh, textural and decorative elements. I have this um, old gold uh, paint. Faro is the brand, Viva Faro. Um, I've had this in my stash for the longest time. Oh boy. <laughs> I don't know if it's supposed to be pasty like this, but um, it works. It works. So I gave it a good mix and I have like this really cool um, kind of pasty color uh, texture. See that? Really nice. And I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to rub my finger on across some of the elements here. You see how that highlighted some of that? So how cool is that? I'm going to add some to the tip too. Again, not too much, not too much. I'm not going to go crazy. I just want to highlight, you know, some of the elements like these rings. I'm going to highlight them a little bit. How cool is that? And look at the difference it makes. Such a small little detail, right? And if you don't have this paint, you can use um, gold color paint. You can use, if you have a marker, a paint marker or metallic marker, you can use that. So I'm using my finger because I have more control over where and how much is being applied. I don't want too much. I don't want it to look too fancy. But how awesome is that? Now I'll go through and I'll rub on a little here and there. Nothing fancy. Okay. And there you have it, my friends. So I have to make 30 of these. I have 30 on my table right now in different uh, stages. Um, I think I'm, do it, I'm done with all the gl hot gluing. And now it's just um, decorating, painting, and whatnot. I will show you the finished product. But look at how awesome that is. Look at that. You would not know that this started out as this. How awesome is that? Love it, love it, love it. Super easy and definitely a lot cheaper <laughs> than $5 a wand. I mean, come on. Holy cow. I nearly fell out. But hey, I can appreciate how much work goes into making these, but I'm glad I was able to make them and not buy them. Um, you know, what, what it cost me was materials and I didn't use anything expensive. Some, you know, acrylic paint, some hot glue. Um, and uh, again, this is, I didn't even need to use this. It's just, I happen to have it. So I'm using it. Some gold highlight or silver highlight and you have awesome wands. Look how beautiful these turned out. So there you have it, my friends. Let me know what you think. And, um, I'll keep sharing <laughs> Ella's um, and mine, I guess, right? Harry Potter DIYs. And like I said, hopefully you'll be inspired. And um, I hope to get back to my craft with me or create with me series pretty soon. I just have to get all of this uh, baby girl's birthday stuff done. She's really a priority for me right now. I got to get my baby's party in order. Okay, and I'm going to admit it. I'm actually wanting this party to be awesome because I love Harry Potter too. So it's like a party for her, yeah, but it's like me too. I'm so gonna have fun at this thing. I'm not gonna jump because if I jump, oh my God, it'll be horrible. But <laughs> I love that I'm gonna be wearing a sorting hat. I'm gonna be dressed up um, in like some vintage type clothing and I get to sort all the kids. I'm gonna have a wand and they're gonna have a spell book and they're gonna be frogs. It's gonna be awesome. <laughs> Thank you, my friends, for stopping by. I truly do appreciate it. Until next time, bye-bye.